So welcome to our other Bible study with the Feed My Sheep. With the, we are in Bible study today in the book of Hosea, and we're on chapter 7 for this Bible study. And again, we're continuing to go forward with uh, all the notation that Hosea has in reference to uh, God releasing judgment on the children of Israel at a moment in time when they have uh, began to walk in rebellion. And they're in Samaria with this rebellion at this moment in time because we had looked at some where they were in Jerusalem. And so this particular book, uh, and as Jose has taken notes, it speaks of some when they were in Samaria. So um, I want to get ahead, go ahead and get started where it begins. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samaria. For they commit falsehood, and the thief comes in, and the troop of robbers spoils without. So, you know, at a moment in time when God is telling them to repent, repent, I, you know, I'm going to uh, forgive you, heal you, deliver you, bring, you know, bless you all over again, and reunite, you know, a relationship with you at that at that time when that, that could have taken place, they didn't take advantage of it, is what he's saying here, because he says, what well, I would have healed Israel. Then the iniquity of Ephraim, Ephraim was discovered, and the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood, okay? And the thief comes in, and the troop of robbers spoil without. And they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own doings have uh, surrounded them, Okay? And they are before my face. Okay, everything because they didn't repent, as all the prophets came before them and told them to do. Take a look at your behavior, different signs and wonders, things that were happening, reference to all that they were doing, and uh, they ignored it. So he says, uh, they they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Okay, now their own doings have I surrounded them. Okay, and it is before my face. They make the clean they, they make the king glad with their wickedness and the princess with their lies. Okay. So because they're not following after God and they're an evil force also, just as an individual may experience that today with uh, groups of people that they may be uh, making happy with their evil deeds because their heart is evil also. So the, of course you're going to make them happy with the evil deeds that you do because their heart is evil also. Same way with this verse right here, as he speaks of the king and the princes, uh, you know, they're full of wickedness. So as they see the children of Israel going forward, doing wickedness also, and not being the light that God had established them to be, they're happy with it, you know? And so he says, they are all, adulterers okay as an oven heated by the baker who sees from raising after he has kneaded the dough until it be leavened okay now that's how he describes them in reference to their adultery that they are in because again God had a covenant with the children of Israel and uh, as they are in Samaria they have begun to worship the idols in that particular region and follow after the people instead of the people following after them. Instead of them being leaders, they became followers, okay, which is what God truly does not want of his kingdom. We are to lead. He says the heavens and the earth, he is over them, okay? And as he places individuals in the kingdom, so are they, okay? They walk in his will and in his uh, covenant. So he says, verse 5, in the day of our king, the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. He stretched out his hand with scorners, for they have made ready their heart like an oven. Whilst they lie in wait, their baker sleeps all the night. In the morning it burns as a flaming fire. For they are all hot as an oven, and have devoured their judges. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that calls unto me. Okay? They've taken over and run amok, okay? And they're not thinking of calling on the Heavenly Father because they've taken over and they've run amok, okay? Because, again, they've taken over their judges, those that they asked for, because, remember, the Church of Israel asked for judges because they saw all the other nations with judges, so they asked for judges also. 
Not that God wanted that for them, but they should have asked for God's will for their lives. But again, that's what they asked God for. Okay? Verse 8. Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Strangers have devoured her strength, and he knows it not. Gray hairs are here and there upon him, for he knows not that the strangers have devoured his strength. And then he goes in to say, verse 10, and the pride of Israel testifies to his face. And they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him for all this. Even after all this taking place, they still will not return unto the Lord. And what the Lord says here is that their pride testifies to their own face, okay? And that's a powerful, very powerful verse and statement from the heavens because he's telling us right here in this in that verse, okay, that whenever an individual is walking in pride, the fact that they will not submit to God is a testimony of the fact that they're walking in pride. That they won't they won't they won't uh submit to his word, what he says, okay? What he's saying in his word, that is a pride of testimony in the heart of an individual to their face. He says it and it tells us right here. That's a powerful, very powerful statement God is making that reveals the heart of an individual that is walking in pride. They are not submitted to the word of God. They're, sub they're not submitted to the ordinance of God. They're not submitted to the spirit of God. They're not submitted to God at all. Okay. There is... And that it tells it all right there in that verse. Verse 11, he says, Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart. They call to Egypt. They go to Assyria. When they shall go, I'll spread my net upon them. I'll bring them down as the fowls of the heaven. I'll chastise them as their congregation uh, has heard. For woe unto them, for they have fled from me destruction unto them because they have transgressed against me though i've redeemed them yet they have spoken lies against me okay now this is what god is saying and they have not cried unto me with their heart when they howled upon their beds they assemble themselves for corn and wine and they rebel against me okay they get ready for the wine and the corn but they continually rebel against god and his word Though I have bound and strengthened their arms, yet do they imagine mischief against me. They return, but not to the Most High. Oh, they didn't return unto the Heavenly Father. They didn't repent unto God, but they are like a deceitful bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. Okay. Now, I want to go back up here because I'm stuck on verse 10 where God talks about how the pride testifies to the face of Israel. And it does it even to this day to an individual that is walking in pride. They will not submit. They are not submitted to the word of God. They are not submitted to the will of God. And then it, this takes me back in Revelation to the Jezebel spirit because that is how the Jezebel spirit operates. It is not submitted to the order and the ordinance and the will of God going forward in the earth. My God, Heavenly Father, in the mighty precious name of Christ, we call upon you right now to remove that evil Jezebel rebellious spirit trying to operate against your will, trying to operate against your church in the land. Oh, holy fire from heaven. Oh, how we need you right now, holy God, to reign and rule as you have decreed and declared out of your word. Come forth mightily in the name of Christ Jesus. Let thy anointing be released from heaven upon the spirit trying to operate against your will in the earth for your saints. Those who are walking in your will, anticipating your going forward in the earth mightily, O heavenly Father, come fire of heaven in Jesus Christ's mighty powerful name. Hallelujah. Oh, rest assured, heavens is here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. Hallelujah for victory in your kingdom, mighty Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. What a powerful revelation, my God. Jesus, help us, Holy God of heaven. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy God. Oh, Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for victory in your kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. 
Whew, hallelujah. God bless you. God be with you. And I will see you on our next Bible study as we continue going forward. My God, in the mighty name of Christ, Jesus. Whew, he says, not by might. The Holy Father said, not by might, not by power, but only by his Holy Spirit. It's victory won. Oh, hallelujah for your victory in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, Heavenly Father. God bless you. God be with you. And I'll see you on our next Bible study revelation or message in the heavens, from the heavens, as we go forward with the Feed My Sheep ministry. God bless you. God be with you.